I'm your commentator for today's Mass, which is the Epiphany of the Lord. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone visiting our parish today. Christ, the Prince of Peace and Lord of Light, leads us on our journey of faith. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Jerry, our Eucharistic ministers, Leanne and Elsa Valdez, and Maria Elena Garcia, our lector, Jasmine Becerra, our servers, Leanne Valdez II and Joshua Becerra, our opening song today will be the King of Glory. If you have a missalette, it's on page 200, song number 227. Our mass intention today is for the soul of Ronald Melendez and a special intention for Lucy Guzman. Please stand to begin our celebration. Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, and we remember the journey of those magi, those wise men, who sought Christ. We too seek the Lord. We too follow the star of faith to a deeper relationship with the Lord. And this morning, as we begin the celebration of the Eucharist, we take time to reflect on the times when we have strayed from our journey to Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I have fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The the wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our responsorial psalm will be, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice, Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted wit, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord every nation on earth will adore you. Reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me from your benefit, namely that the mystery was made to 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 known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed. To his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord.
star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the, through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. Behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in the 1950s, when I was growing up, our televisions were small, they were black and white, and we didn't have cable. And I suppose there are a lot of people who can't imagine uh, such a, a terrible existence with so, so few resources. But there were some really great programs that were being produced in the 1950s. In fact, some people call that the golden age of television. And one of the programs that I remember very clearly was a program called You Are There. It was a series narrated by Walter Cronkite. And the series attempted to recreate historic events as though they were happening right now, as though uh, there was a, a news coverage of, for example, the, the storming of the Bastille, as though it were taking place now with news reporters on the scene to uh, take video of, of what was going on and to interview people. And it seems to me that that approach might be useful in engaging with the scriptures and, and understanding the scriptures. And in fact, uh, St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, advocated using our imagination to put ourselves in a scene from the Bible, to imagine that we are there just as Walter Cronkite wanted us to imagine that we were there at these various historic events. So why don't we do that this morning with the story of the Magi, a familiar story, a story that all of us have heard probably many times before. So who were these Magi? Well, the interesting thing about the Magi who came to be, according to Matthew, among the first to do homage to Christ, they were not Jews, they were pagans. They probably came from Mesopotamia and likely from what is modern day Iran. They were probably Persian yeah, because they, these were people who were known to be great astronomers and astrologers. So they were outsiders 
And they were seekers. They had seen the star. They had this, this vision uh, of a newborn king of the Jews. And they set out going hundreds of miles across uh, rather deserted areas to do homage to the king. They had received a call through the star. They had a vision. They had gifts that they wanted to offer. So, like the Magi, we too have received a call to a journey. It began with our birth, of course, the journey of life, but in a special way began with the journey of our, uh, of, that began at baptism, the journey of our life of faith. We have also been called to a journey to the Lord. And although we are here because we have found the Lord, or perhaps because we might better put it, the Lord has found us, our journey is to a deeper understanding and knowledge and relationship with Jesus. So we too have a vision. We too have a goal, just like the Magi did. And we too have gifts, perhaps not the gold, frankincense, and myrrh of the Magi, but we have gifts that each of us has been given to offer to the Lord. And we do that by offering them, by sharing them with one another, the gifts that we can offer to our brothers and sisters. Often they are gifts that are not tangible, they're not things that we can offer them, but rather the, the gift of service. And like the Magi, we too have had a star, or perhaps many stars, to guide us. People in our lives who have uh, introduced us to the faith, who've been models for us, uh, parents, other family members, aunts and uncles, for example, teachers, perhaps some of the priests who served this parish over the years. So we, we too have had stars who have guided us on our journey. And we might ask ourselves, imagining again that we are uh, like the Magi in the story today, do I still experience that call, or rather, have I allowed myself to experience that call to the journey that perhaps once was very strong in my life? Do I still have that vision, that sense of hope that the Magi had? Have I been generous in offering my gifts to the Lord through my gifts of service to one another? Who are the stars who guide me today? Do I pay attention to them? Am I thankful for them? Now the other major character in today's gospel is King Herod. And I suspect that uh, most of us would not want to identify with Herod because he is portrayed in the gospel as being a, a villain, a fairly evil person. And so he was, although he did a lot of good things. Among other things, he began rebuilding the temple, which was still under construction during the lifetime of Jesus, and some other things. But as we know from the, the, the story which follows, the slaughter of the innocents, he was also uh, a person uh, who was capable of great cruelty. Herod was fearful when he heard news of the birth of Jesus, because this was a challenge to him, a threat. Was this new king going to take his place? challenge him, become the new king, that mean that his dynasty would come to an end. So Herod was fearful when he heard this news, and we, we know, of course, that he plotted then to kill Jesus by killing all of the, the male children under a certain age, as we, will, we, hear, or as we heard on the, the Feast of the Holy Innocents on December 28th. So he was fearful of the newborn Jesus, and he was ready to deceive and to manipulate the Magi for his own purposes. So we might ask ourselves, is there a little of the Herod in each of us? Do we sometimes find the message of Jesus challenging? Are we afraid of really living the message of the gospel? Because it is indeed challenging, and sometimes it threatens our safety and our security by really living what the gospel calls us to live. Perhaps we, like Herod, find ways of deceiving ourselves or even manipulating others because we find living according to the teachings of Jesus, according to the gospel, too much to bear, too threatening, too fearful. 
So today's feast gives us an opportunity to kind of play uh, you are there as we approach the scriptures, to place ourselves in that story, to see ourselves in the Magi, to see ourselves in Herod, and to ask ourselves, is there a little of the Magi in us? Are we living up to the model that the Magi gave us, a model of faith, a model of commitment, a model of generous response to the call because they wanted to know Jesus. They wanted to come and offer their gifts to Jesus. Today's feast is an opportunity for us to reflect on the journey of our lives. We, like the Magi, have been called to a deeper relationship with the Lord. We are called to be people of vision, to be people of hope. Today we also give thanks for the gifts we have received and we commit ourselves to offering those gifts to the Lord through our generous service, through our generous concern and care for our brothers and sisters. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer our gifts on the altar, we offer our prayers to the Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share the gospel of Christ, that their lives serve as models of justice and holiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they ensure religious freedom for all citizens, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and the poor, that the riches of the sea and the wealth of nations be shared with them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body or spirit, that they know healing and freedom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather here, for our whole community, that God's presence among us be more clearly seen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of Ronald Melendez, who is deceased, may he be judged in mercy on the last day, and may all of us, the living and the dead, rise in glory and grace on that great day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of Lucy Guzman, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers we hold in our hearts, joined with those of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and all the saints in light be heard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us, gifts that uh, you call us to give back to you through our generous service to one another. Grant that we might indeed be generous in using the gifts that you have given us, that we might be faithful to our journey as we're the Magi. This we ask through Jesus our Lord. This is the last day for Christmas, so our offertory song can be found in your missalette number 319, O Come All Ye Faithful. That is in your missalette number 319, O Come All Ye Faithful. Please join us. <clears throat>
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations, and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, a spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope, and Dale our bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Now we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
have several announcements. First, a reminder that the Catholic Services Appeal Campaign <coughs> will be soon coming to a close. Please remember if you have not paid your CSA pledge to do so, do so before January 28th. If not, the parish will have to pay whatever the balance is. So please um, pay up. Uh, reminder to pick up your envelopes. Uh, this is what keeps you registered in the parish. So please, if you have not picked up your envelopes, please do so. The altar servers, old, new, and anyone who's interested in becoming an altar server, there will be a meeting this Saturday at 9.30 uh, a.m. Please bring a parent with you. Uh, an announcement that Julia Alanis passed away, for those that knew her. Please keep their family in prayers. Uh, to remember tonight at 6.30 there's a mass for the Levantamiento del Niño Jesus. Uh, everyone's welcome to attend. Thank you. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, May God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.